Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malicote. I'm an anchor reporter for KTVU Fox 2 in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is a book writing coach and author. She's also an entrepreneur and a creativity catalyst. We'll have more of that coming up. She's here to give your mood a bit of a boost, some helpful tips to rise above our COVID world. We're all kind of stuck in for the time being. Let's say hi to Lisa Tenner. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Um, well, thanks. Hi, Frank. And thanks for having me here today. Good to have you. Well, tell us, what is a creativity catalyst? Well, like, like, like it might sound, if I help people really tap into their creative source, whether it's for writing or other creative projects. Most, mostly it ends up being writing and writing books. But, um, but I kind of call it the muse, you know, tapping into that part of you that knows the answers, has all these creative ideas. It's just a matter of kind of getting in there. Yeah, so if you've got some ideas that are kind of stuck in the back of your mind and you want to put them on paper, you are, you are the catalyst to help folks kind of mine that stuff out of their head and uh, create magic, I guess, right? You got it, that's it. All right, well, we can all use a little of that. I, I know as a, as a journalist, you know, sometimes you stare at a page and go, I cannot do this. And what is it in a matter, you get an idea and then all of a sudden it just all comes out of you. I imagine that happens to all writers, right? Yeah, yeah, but, right. And that's what we want to re recreate. You know, we want a system. So that you mentioned, right? Like if your chair's in the right place, it comes easily. We want a system where we can just kind of sink right into it. And there we are and the muse is ready to go and the writing just comes or whatever the creative project is. All right, well, I know you got some tips on boosting our mood and the number one uh, tip, at least on the list, kind of surprised me, humming. What does humming do? Humming actually relaxes you and calms your nervous system. And it also can help you sleep, which I was surprised to find. But you can imagine the better you sleep, the more, you know, the less stressed you are too. So it, it's like such a great tip. And you can just hum a single tone. Mm. Or you can hum a whole tune and make one up. <laughs> so you can have fun with it and be creative too. And it kind of takes your mind off things too, I, I think. It's silly, but uh, effective, right? It works. It works. All right. Uh, number two, near and dear to my heart, is uh, journal. Uh, the power of the pen. If you can sit down and just write your thoughts on paper, uh, sometimes uh, it not only gets your mind off things, but you can reread it later and it might help you, you know, solve some issues in your world, I guess. Yeah, and, and even while you're writing, it might sort of help you resolve some problem. So here's my journal. And as you said, you can write about the things that are worrying you or, or that problems that you're trying to solve, or you can also write about the things you're grateful for. And sometimes it's nice to do a balance of those so that we're not just focusing on the challenge, but we focus on that part of us that really sustains and supports us. Now, when you when you talk about a journal, is it like a diary, like what you did today or what you're thinking or all of the above? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the amazing thing about journaling is it really can be whatever you want. So you can have a blank journal like I have, and you know, here it is, blank pages. Uh, but there are lots of journals now on the market, in fact, I'm working on one, where you can have prompts and so it'll lead you right through it. So you, you know, if you want a little more guidance, uh, you, you can get that and have a journal where you write in it, but you also have some prompts to get you going. Right, right. Uh, maybe some questions and some things to think about. Uh, uh, I love number three because I'm, uh, I'm up at Lake Tahoe right now. And a sense of smell, when you smell something, it, it elicits maybe a memory or something, and it's usually good. Uh, I know uh, my family came up here for 30 some odd years. My parents were married up here back in the 40s. And every time I smell that high Sierra air, it beckons back to just some great times with family, so. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think everybody has this certain smells that just, you know, completely bring them back and also just uplift us. And actually um, trees and flowers and plants all have these chemicals in them that that do uplift the mood so i've got you know if you can go outside and or you have flowers in your in your in your home that can be a nice a nice way to uplift your mood i also have some essential oil here so you can uh that there there's plenty of information on the internet about different different spells but anything citrusy is nice for uplifting moods so things like 
wild orange or uh, lemon oil might be good ones. Yeah, oh, whatever it is, bake, like baked bread. My, my mom would that. make cardamom seed bread and whatever we'd smell Ooh. that. Because it took hours, but it had this distinct smell. And that reminds me of my mother. You know? Wow. Yeah, cardamom is such a lovely fruity scent. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good one. Um, I like your next one too. Big belly breathing. I'm into yoga. I do Bikram, although not a lot lately because of the pandemic. But uh, um, when you breathe, your whole body just kind of uh, kind of takes a deep breath. So I would imagine that's helpful. Yes, it's like a total reset. And you know, a lot of research now is coming about uh, coming. Um, coming up about the vagus nerve, right, which touches like all these different points in the body from way up here down to the belly and, and below. And so when we do that diaphragmatic breath or that deep belly breath, it, it resets the nervous system through that particular vagus nerve. But what you can do if you want to breathe deeply is just take your hands and place them on your abdomen, on your belly, about three fingers width below your navel. And just place your attention there. You know, we're usually breathing up here, unless you have done a lot of yoga, which you have. Uh, and we just want to bring it down. So have your hands down there and just focus your attention and feel your belly expand as you breathe in. Yeah. And then you can sigh and you can, vis you know, you can really just let your whole body relax as you breathe out. And three breaths is great. Of course, if you can do more, that's even better. But even with three breaths, you'll notice your whole system start to reset and settle down. The breath is one of the easiest ways to de-stress. It's amazing when you put your mind, when you concentrate on something and take your mind off other things. And <laughs> you, you can bring your stress level down. Um, I love the next one. We, we touched on it a little bit about the sense of smell, but uh, just get out of nature, listen to the birds, uh, hear the wind, that kind of thing. Yes, yeah, my, one of my favorite ways to, you know, any kind of movement is good and it gets, you know, it, it, it helps the whole system de-stress. But if you can get out in nature, it's, it's a, an extra big plus. And actually uh, on my walk today, I picked some smart weed and I wanted to, to mention it today because one of the things you can do on your walk is learn about foraging and learn about the things that naturally grow in your area. Well, this is smart weed or ladies thumb and it grows pretty much everywhere. Um, it grows, you know, like in the cracks in city sidewalks, it grows all over people's lawns, um, all, you know, countryside, woods, uh, up in the mountains. So, well, I don't know about woods, meadows, but up in the mountains. So it, it's an amazing weed and you can eat the leaves and you can eat the flowers and I'll put it up to the camera so you can wow. see you can eat the flowers and the seeds. And the seeds actually are high in omega-3s. And guess what? Omega-3s de-stress the body. So you can, you know, once you get out in nature, you can find all these things, the smells, the, the plants that you eat can all help your body to come back to that relaxed, calm yeah. place where whatever is going on in the outside world is not, it, it, it's not quite so pressing on you and you can really return to that center within. Yeah, that sense of smell, but that sense of, sound is so powerful too. Um, yeah. I'm up at Tahoe and the neighbor here has, there's not a brook that runs through, but he's got kind of a, a fake little waterfall in his backyard. And from the backyard here, you can hear it at night and it goes on at four and goes off at night, but you feel like you've got a little brook running through here and that's relaxing, wow. you know, it's nice. It's nice. It's really nice. That's, a, how, that's such a beautiful sound. How about gratitude? Oh yeah, that's a big one. You know, there's all that research in positive psychology about what gratitude can do for our mood. And uh, it can take us from, you know, feeling kind of low or, or just, you know, middle of the road and really just lift up the mood. So I, I actually brought a picture of my grandma because I think one of the easiest ways to tap into gratitude is to think of the people we love and all the things that we're grateful to them for. Yeah, it just makes you feel like uh, uh, you're special and, and worthy, you know. Um, yeah. And maybe the most important thing uh, during the pandemic, although we're getting out and about a little bit, but I've kind of made it a practice to uh, either pick up the phone or send a text or a nice email to, uh, to people to stay connected. And maybe some people you haven't talked to in moons, 
but you know, throw them a little note just to rattle their cage a little bit. And uh, that always makes you feel good. It's like getting a letter in the mailbox if people still do that. Whoa, it's like, it's uplifting. It is. My, my husband and I went for a walk around our neighborhood the other day and ran into a neighbor and she said, oh, let me go get something. Ran into her house, came back out and gave us this little packet of postcards. She said, here, send these to people that you haven't had a chance to connect with during the pandemic and just let them know you're thinking of them. And she's been giving them out to everybody. Uh, I, I just was so touched by it. I thought it was such a great idea, but it, it's we're not just doing it for ourselves, right? That's a step that we're also doing for others. So really do think about the people who are most isolated that you know, uh, even if you don't usually call them, make it a point to do that. And of course, if you do like a Zoom call with family members or friends, if you schedule ahead of time, you have something to look forward to as well. So that's, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. If, um, and I'm that way too. It's like after a vacation, you go, well, when's the next one, you know? Something. <laughs> kind of look out in front of, oh yeah, my sister's coming up that week and that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, go ahead. No. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just, just you know, if you can get out for a walk and stay socially distant, that's also a wonderful way to connect with people. Yeah, I've been hiking a lot. Um, uh -huh. I live in San Francisco, so, uh, it, and you did at one time, uh, and it's a very walkable city, but yeah, you know, through the hustle bustle of work, I didn't always do it, but my mm -hmm. other half and I, we're going through the Presidio, we're going up the Lion Street stairs, walking Chrissy Field to Golden Gate. I mean, uh, it's it's great, and you get to know your neighbors, socially distanced, but you, you I think, and you're checking the architecture out now and uh -huh. looking at things maybe a little differently than you did before. We, I think we've all slowed down and it's been such a gift in many ways. I don't want to downplay the pain, especially for people who are losing family members or, you know, worried, but there have been such gifts of this time where I think we are slowing down, realizing what really matters. And we are becoming, I think, more grateful as a people for what we do have in our lives. And we're learning how to focus on those things more. What is your number one mood booster? What do you do to uh, get you in the mood to write or to just kind of uplift yourself? Well, um, about like four or five years ago, I started practicing Qigong, which is a Chinese martial art similar to Tai Chi. Okay. And actually it's where I learned to breathe. My teacher, Lita Franklin, was amazing at teaching us how to breathe deeply. Uh, and it was really her number one tip. But one of the simplest Qigong movements is called bouncing or shaking. And you may have even seen people do this. Um, and it's similar to being on a rebound or some people do it that way, but it's wonderful to do on the grass or just on a, on a carpet. And imagine that I'm standing <laughs> because you would wanna do the standing and you'd have your feet kind of flat. You, you know, you're not gonna come up on your toes and you just shake your whole body and you will feel the stress just come right off you from like head, shoulders, knees, toes, the whole body, the stress just like comes right down. It's so nice. And Chinese martial artists have been doing this for thousands of years to relax the entire body, to prepare for meditation practices. Uh, but I find it's such a great practice to do before writing. And in my book writing classes, I have a get your writing done program where we do those Qigong practices before we write. And it's really fun. It, it just gets you in this zone. So I hope you'll try it. Let me know how it goes for well, you. I may start right now. I, I've actually seen that. I, uh, well, I, I'm in Oakland now where I work, but my old station, Channel 5, used to be uh, right down the street uh, from Chinatown. And there's a oh, few yeah. parks there. And me and the weather guy would walk at God's hours in the morning, you know, just to get some air and, to, you know, boost our mood, so to speak. And I would see uh, old Asian males and females would be doing that. I go, what are they doing? But uh -huh. there you go. It's yeah, it's so simple. And you know, you could do it for two minutes and have a benefit. And then there are martial artists who will do it for 20 minutes and they'll just bounce. <laughs> oh, sounds good to me. Well, if people want to get in touch with you and uh, kind of tap into their creative juices, how do they do it, Lisa? They can go to my website, lisatenner.com and it's L-I-S-A-T-E-N-E-R.com. And uh, lots of gifts there for them. There's a blog where I'm happy to answer questions and connect with people. So yeah, I, I invite anyone to come learn more and, and I hope I can help you in any way, be more creative, get some writing done, 
whatever you need. She is a creativity catalyst. That's Lisa Tedder. Lisa, thank you very much. All the best. Thank you so much. Take good care. Oh, I will. I will. I'm Frank Malicote. If you'd like more information, you can go to newsnowfox.com. Have a great day, everybody.